India's light combat helicopter Prachand, developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and inducted into the armed forces in 2022, has received a significant armor upgrade. HAL recently introduced a lightweight, ceramic-based armor system, Felid 2, designed to withstand 12.7 by 108 mm and 7.62 times 54 R API rounds, and weighing just 102 kg. The modular panels protect critical cockpit zones, without compromising agility or high-altitude performance. Validated through extensive tests, the armor enhances survivability against small arms and heavy machine gun threats, essential for operations in regions like Ladakh and Sayachin. This development aligns with India's growing focus on survivable, high-altitude platforms amid border tensions, while also boosting the LCH's export appeal as a combat-proven, versatile asset for modern warfare scenarios. The Indian Air Force is set to acquire 110 BrahMos A air launch cruise missiles as part of a $7.64 billion defense package, recently cleared by the Defense Ministry. This move follows the missile's successful combat debut during Operation Sindor, where it reportedly struck key Pakistani air bases with high precision. The BrahMos A, co developed by India and Russia, was first integrated with the Su 30 MKI in 2017 offering long-range standoff capability, with speeds nearing Mach 3 and a range over 450 kilometers, the missile's low radar signature and autonomous targeting make it a potent strategic asset. The purchase, which also includes 87 drones, signals India's intent to modernize its aerial strike force and reinforce deterrence along its western borders. Tanbo Imaging has announced the development of its new Astra Remote Controlled Weapon System, RCWS, marking a significant step in India's advancement in automated defense technologies. The company revealed initial design insights, showcasing a turret-mounted weapon integrated with a high-resolution optical or thermal imaging system. The Astra RCWS is expected to include AI-powered targeting and real-time data integration enhancing its precision in various environments, including low visibility conditions. While detailed specs and deployment timelines are yet to be disclosed, the project reflects Tanbo's push toward sophisticated, remotely operated weapon platforms. The announcement aligns with broader trends in defense modernization, positioning Astra RCWS as a potential game-changer in boosting force protection, operational efficiency, and battlefield responsiveness for the armed forces. In July 2025, Larson and Tubro's Precision Engineering and Systems Division signed a strategic agreement with Hyderabad-based Green Arrow to co-develop indigenous micro-turbojet engines for high-speed unmanned aerial vehicles. LNT, with over three decades of defense engineering experience, aims to integrate these engines into its tactical drone platforms for the Indian Armed Forces. Green Arrow, founded in 2023, gained attention after successfully testing its hydrogen-powered Blue Dragon jet engine in May 2025. Their collaboration focuses on lightweight, high-thrust engines to boost UAV performance in surveillance and combat roles. With certification from Center for Military Airworthiness and Certification and prior contributions to major defense programs, LNT plans to deliver drones capable of reaching 450 km per hour speeds and 200 plus km range enhancing India's ISR and combat capabilities through fully indigenous technologies. India is in advanced talks with Russia to acquire our 37M and our 77M air-to-air -air missiles for the Su-30 MKI fleet, aiming to counter growing BVR threats from China and Pakistan. This move follows concerns raised after the 2019 Balakot skirmish, where an IF MiG-21 was downed using a longer-range missile. While India's indigenous Astra Mk-2 
is progressing, it may not be fully deployed until 2029 to 2030. In the interim, the R-37M, with a 300 to 400 km range, and R-77M, with a 190 km range, offer immediate capability boosts. These missiles will allow the IF to outmatch the Chinese PL-15 and Pakistani PL-15E. The plan also aligns with India's Make in India goals, with local production under discussion, to strengthen air superiority. India has taken a major step toward developing hypersonic weapons by inaugurating two advanced testing facilities in Hyderabad. The Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, unveiled a one-meter hypersonic wind tunnel and a scramjet-connected pipe mode test facility at the Center for Advanced Systems. These new setups are vital for designing and validating the hypersonic cruise missile, which is being developed to travel at speeds beyond Mach 5. The wind tunnel will allow testing of missile aerodynamics under extreme conditions, while the scramjet test facility will support high-speed propulsion research. These developments reduce India's dependency on foreign infrastructure and mark a significant push toward indigenous capability in hypersonic and scramjet technologies, placing the country among a select group with such advanced tools. In a major push toward defense self-reliance, BML Limited has inducted the Mechanical Minefield Marking Equipment Mark II into the Indian Army. Developed jointly with DRDO's RNDE Lab, the advanced system was officially handed over during a ceremony attended by senior military officials and defense scientists. Lieutenant General Arvind Walia and BEML's director, Sanjay Sam, led the event, highlighting the collaborative achievement. The minefield marking equipment is designed to semi-automatically mark and fence minefields across varied terrains with speed and accuracy, enhancing troop safety and operational efficiency. Its deployment reduces dependency on foreign tech and supports India's Atmanirbhar Bharat vision, while significantly strengthening the Army's readiness for battlefield scenarios involving minefields. India's DRDO, through its Aeronautical Development Establishment, AD, has begun development of a 2D thrust vectoring nozzle, intended for the Guttuck Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle, marking a major technological step toward enhancing maneuverability and stealth. The project follows the release of an official blueprint, approved by GTRE engineers, detailing a symmetrical, modular nozzle design capable of vectoring exhaust flow vertically and laterally, for superior agility. The schematic includes eight movable nozzle segments, supported by actuators and linkages, allowing pitch and yaw control, key for tight turns and evasive maneuvers. The design also incorporates a cooling system to manage high exhaust temperatures, with mounting structures engineered for stability during high thrust operations. The nozzle is expected to pair with the GTX engine, a dry Kaveri variant, producing 50 to 60 kN of thrust, to enable supercruise capability, vital for stealth missions. Guttuck's first flight is scheduled for 2026, and the integration of 2D thrust vectoring is likely to enhance its survivability against advanced air defenses while supporting future upgrades like hypersonic propulsion. <laughs> India is advancing its stealth capabilities with the establishment of a microwave radar absorbing material testing facility designed to support the development of the fifth generation AMCA. Spearheaded by the Aeronautical Development Agency, in partnership with HAL and DRDO, the AMCA project relies heavily on radar absorbing materials to reduce the aircraft's radar cross section and enhance survivability. The microwave radar absorbing material facility will focus on evaluating the reflectivity of advanced coatings and composite structures in microwave frequencies, particularly in the X-band and Ku-band, common in military radars. Materials showing high absorption, with reflection losses beyond minus 20 dB, are considered vital for the AMCA stealth profile. 
India's recent focus has shifted toward integrating carbon-based composites, such as graphene and carbon nanotubes, into aircraft structures for long-lasting, lightweight stealth solutions. The facility is also expected to explore advanced magnetic composites, metamaterials, and frequency-selective surfaces. By enabling in-house testing and validation, the MREM facility will reduce reliance on foreign technologies and ensure the AMCA can effectively evade modern air defense systems in hostile environments. India has officially declined the U.S. offer of the F-35A stealth fighter, narrowing its fifth-generation options to Russia's Su-57 and its own advanced medium combat aircraft. However, due to long-standing concerns over the Su-57 stealth design, engine performance, radar limitations, and low production maturity, the aircraft is considered unfit for Indian Air Force needs. With no suitable foreign alternatives, India is now focused on accelerating its indigenous AMCA program, developed by DRDO's Aeronautical Development Agency. The AMCA MK-1, slated for production with GE F-414 engines, aims for a first flight around 2028, with full production by 2035. However, urgency is growing to fast-track the timeline and begin low-rate production by 2030 to replace aging fleets like the MiG-29 and Mirage 2000. Though the IF currently plans for only two squadrons of MK-1, defense planners advocate expanding the order to four to ensure production viability and future upgrades. The AMCA program is now central to India's push for technological sovereignty and air power self-reliance under the Atmanirbhar Bharat vision. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.